Section 16.1, Acids and Bases, a brief review. We've already looked at acids and bases a tiny bit uh, at the beginning of the book, but an acid and a base has been studied for a long, long time. Even in the ancient world, you, could, you would have people who would make wine and vinegar, and those are all acids. Uh, bases are like lime, uh, lye, you make soap. So anybody that's made soap, for a thousand years has been using bases. So it's been used, but uh, not really studied until until the 19th century. When the, uh, Swede named Arrhenius was the first to kind of propose a theory of how acids and bases worked. So we're going to see that there's two huge types of reactions in chemistry. There's acid-base chemistry and there's oxidation-reduction chemistry. So this is an enormous, enormous number of, of um, chemical reactions are considered uh, acids and bases. We're going to see, uh, I'll just throw this at you at the beginning, but an acid and a base chemistry is basically playing with protons. So if you, if you transfer a proton from one to another, you're dealing with acids and bases. But at the beginning, as they were just piecing it together and trying to understand it, uh, this this fellow was making um, observations that every time that you had a hydrogen ion, which happens to be a proton, but it's a hydrogen ion, there's no electrons in hydrogen uh, ion, uh, that those hydrogen ions were always present whenever you had an acid. Okay, so this is so an Arrhenius acid is anything that when you put it in water and it breaks apart it breaks apart into protons, okay, or breaks apart into hydrogen ions. So the general example would be uh, some kind of a hydrogen because we're going to see that for an Arrhenius acid and even for other, other acid theories, you're going to donate a proton or you're going to do donate a hydrogen. And so normally it's written in front of something. So you've got like hydrogen plus chlorine, hydrochloric acid, or hydrogen plus sulfate, which is sulfuric acid, you have a hydrogen to donate, okay, so this is going to be hydrogen plus some kind of a connection to that hydrogen, and it breaks apart into the hydrogen ion, and then it, uh, the electron is stolen by whatever's left over from that, from that acid, okay, so we'll see thousands of examples that use this kind of format. So you're going to have a hydrogen normally at the beginning. You can almost tell an acid just by that there's a hydrogen out front and then something that's left over. So when the hydrogen is given, then that leftover part is left over. That's why I think that's all it, that's why it's called leftover. So um, a basis uh, from, from antiquity was saw as bitter. So if you would taste a base, it's going to be bitter to your tongue. But if you put it on your hand, uh, your fingers slip together. In fact, you're going to see that lye, uh, which you would make, say, from, from white ashes, would be uh, what you put on a football field to, to lime the field uh, from limestone, is going to be uh, a base. And that base is going to essentially turn the fat in your fingers to soap. That's why it's slippery. So if you were to put it in, you were to put it in a big pot with some uh, fat from, say, a pig pig slaughter, and you would have lots of pig fat. You would put the white ashes from the fire into the into the pot, and as you mix it, you'll end up with soap. Okay, it will probably t take the height off of you, but it would still be soap, and it would still be able to clean things. So a base was bitter and slippery. Arrhenius found that any time that you put a base into water, you would produce hydroxide. Okay, so hydroxide, we're going to see, is a beautiful base. All of the very strong bases are hydroxides. So here is something connected to a hydroxide, and then you end up, the hydroxide steals the electron, and so you end up with a hydroxide ion, and then whatever's left over. So that's an Arrhenius base.